Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today we are looking at a Fanuc power supply, a high voltage power supply. I believe they call this an Alpha Series power supply. And basically what this is, is the DC bus for all the servo drives and the spindle drive. And uh, this one has a problem. This is out of a 2000-ish Como wood router and basically what happens is whenever we power up the machine and the main contact pulls in it blows the fuses for that supply the three-phase power to this power supply so internally there's a problem that's causing a, a short basically and blowing those fuses so I'm gonna show you how to how to do some testing and figure out if the things okay Okay, this is a super simplified schematic of how a VFD or a servo drive or really any kind of motor drive works, a modern one anyway. Basically, the way they work is AC power comes in here and it gets rectified here in this section into DC power. And then on these lines here, that's what's called the DC bus. And the DC bus gets gets filtered by this great big capacitor right here and then it's fed down here into the drive section and these are uh, transistor modules here that take the DC power and invert it back into three-phase AC power an approximated version of AC and sends it out to the to the motor and then when the motor decelerates it acts like a generator and it creates excess electricity that gets fed back into this inverter section and then it gets basically rectified the opposite way and fed back into the DC bus and then typically there will be some switches and a big resistor in order to bleed off the excess current that's in this DC bus. Now the way that the FANUC system works and as far as I know, most CNC, you know, big name CNC machines have worked this way since about the mid 1990s. Is that, you know, the machine has a spindle drive, three, four, maybe five servo drives. And what they do is basically they take this section right here and they make it into a separate module. And that's the power supply. And this section right here supplies the DC power to all the different drives. So in the old days, you know, the sometimes the servo drives would all share one DC bus and then the spindle drive would be on its own or in some cases the the servo drives all had their own power supply and their own DC bus and they all they were all self-contained. And so today what we're working on is a power supply, high voltage power supply, and it basically is this section of the circuit right here. So that greatly simplifies the the module that we're going to work on. Okay, so the so the first thing I'm going to do is check all the inputs and outputs to each other and to the ground. And uh the, the m values here don't matter. It's just kind of a reality check to make sure nothing is shorted. And so I'll just set my my meter for resistance and uh check across the DC bus. Good. L1, L2, fine. L2, L3, fine. L1, L3, fine. And then each one to ground. Nothing. 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 Okay, so we're good there. We don't have any any dead shorts on the input or output side. So now it's time to test the diodes.
Okay, so we're down to the to the high power side of the power supply and or the high voltage side I should say. So these three modules right here are the rectification. So that's your each one of these is a full wave rectifier. But basically uh, these are thyristors or SCRs. So they are rectifiers, but they don't actually work as rectifiers until they receive a gate voltage. And uh, this is the data sheet right here. And hopefully you can see this. Yeah, this is the schematic right here for the one that we have in our circuit. And so it, each side functions as a diode and, and does rectification, but it doesn't actually allow any voltage to cross until it gets some voltage at the gate. So really the only way that we can test them is isolated from the circuit. So what we're going to do, there's, there's a couple ways you can test these, but basically you have to apply a voltage to one side of the diode and then also apply a voltage to the gate. So the easiest way to test them is with a, with a light. So this is kind of what I have rigged up here. It's just a 12 volt uh, marker light from a trailer. And I have one side hooked up to my to the negative of this power supply. And the power supply is in constant voltage mode and I've set it up for 9 volts. So if we look at the data sheet for the thyristor, it tells us here that the maximum gate current is 3 amps and the maximum gate voltage is 5 volts so we don't want to exceed the voltage and we definitely don't want to exceed the amperage Usually you need more than 5 volts in order to actually make these things work correctly. Uh, and I'll show you how it works. So what I've got is uh, the negative side of my power supply is hooked up to the negative side of this light. The positive side of my power supply I'm going to hook up to the incoming side of this module. Let's try this one here. And then this jumper right here we're going to use to actuate the gate. So I'm going to hook up the positive side of the light to this side of the diode. So when this circuit is working correctly, you know the current should come in here from the power supply, go across this diode, through this wire, into the light, through the negative, back to the power supply. That's the circuit but right now it's not doing anything and that's because there's no gate voltage and you only have to apply the gate voltage momentarily and it should latch so I'll take power from the incoming side and the gate is this small pin over here and you see the circuit has latched so that one is functioning correctly now if we reverse the circuit So now we have the incoming power coming on the opposite side of the diode. And again we apply voltage to the gate. Nothing happens. So that one is working correctly. Uh, now let's test the other one. The other side of the, of the diode. Or the other side of the wave I should say. So if we connect the power from here to the other gate. Again the circuit works correctly. And then if we reverse it, like so, and apply power to the gate, nothing. So th this module is working correctly. Let me show you one that doesn't work correctly. So on this module right here, you'll see that as soon as I connect the power, we have the light coming on. So this module has a dead short. And uh, if I reverse the leads, so running through the diode the opposite way, again, the light comes on. So this module here has a dead short in it. Uh, now we can test the other 
side of the circuit or the other half of the bridge and if I apply voltage to the gate it does function correctly on that side of the bridge but let me show you what happens this is kind of interesting if I apply a voltage to the other gate the gate for the opposite uh, thyristor the light momentarily comes on so something inside this of this IGBT module has has shorted way shorted and uh, it's definitely not working correctly so I'll go through these three or four modules here and check them and uh, we know for sure that this one is bad okay so now I have to test the uh, these big switching IGBT modules and here's the data sheet for them you can see the circuit here there's one NPN transistor and one diode and there's two modules, and they're basically the same except that they're mirror images of each other. So the diode is on the opposite side and the NPN transistor is on the opposite side. So I'm only going to show you how to test one of them, but basically the test is the same except reversed for the other one. So uh, basically what you have to keep in mind is that the diode test is going to be the same as the diode test we did before except this time we don't have to have voltage to the ground or to the gate sorry there's no there's no activation for this diode it's on all the time and then the NPN transistor is basically a switch except that an NPN transistor pulls to ground so that means that if it was a light switch it would be a switch that was installed on the neutral and so voltage or amperage current flows from the collector through the transistor to the emitter uh, but in the NPN transistor the emitter has to be the ground and then whatever load you're trying to switch has to be over here on this side of the transistor so I'll show you how to rig that up it's pretty pretty simple okay so to test the transistor or sorry, to test the diode function. It's basically the same as what we had before. So we'll set up our light here. Negative to the to the ground side of the light. <clears throat> and then we'll hook our positive up to E2. Which is this one here. And then <clears throat> we'll take our other side of the lamp hook it up to C1 yeah, and voltage flows through. If we reverse the circuit come on. nothing. So that's working correctly. Alright so here's the setup to test the NPN transistor. So basically we take our negative side and connect it to the emitter which in this case is going to be E1 here and then the positive side goes through the load which is this lamp and then into the collector C1 now the transistor won't do anything until you get voltage to the gate so the way I can do that is just touch my thumb to the positive side and then touch the gate and the light comes on and then it latches on and then turn it off I just connect my finger from the negative side to the gate again. <clears throat> and actually these transistors seem to latch, stay latched for a long time. So even if you disconnect the power, they stay latched, which is odd. But yeah, they're functioning correctly. So my body just acts like a big resistor. These IGBTs only need like half a milliamp to actuate. So that's it. Everything looks good except for this module right here which has a dead short between these two. So I'll get a new one of those ordered and we'll put it in.
So one other project as far as electronics go. This is a low voltage DC power supply. Uh, what they would usually call a switched mode power supply. And this is the low voltage DC power supply for the, the control on a Dynapath Delta 20. Uh, it's out of a tree journeyman 325 CNC mill. And as far as I know, this is a working power supply. They, the customer bought it maybe as a refurbished or, or used, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was supposed to work. Unfortunately, what happened is they, they connected it wrong. So the incoming connections are supposed to be here, 110 volt AC. And what they did is they connected it here to the DC output side. And uh, obviously mayhem ensued. All I could find that, that was caused by that is this little tubular ceramic capacitor totally blew out. And uh, I've already gone ahead and sourced a replacement. So uh, that's it right there, soldered in place. And then the only other thing that I found that was kind of wrong or weird, this big capacitor here on the in incoming side, it had a bad uh, solder joint on the bottom. So it was actually loose and not making connection with the board, or at least not making solid connection with the board. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the chassis and we'll do some testing and see see if we got lucky. Okay, I've got, I've got this power supply board back in the chassis and I've applied uh, 110 volt to the incoming side. And you can hear the, the oscillator working, so it's doing something. I'll take a look with our multimeter. Now, some of these some of these power supplies won't start up without a load and actually this one was the same way so the the power supply actually wouldn't start up until I put my multimeter across the 5 volt terminals and then that was enough of a load to get it started so ground here in the middle there's our 5 volts there's our 24 a little high there's minus 15, plus 15. And then this PF is a power failure circuit that's uh, not used as far as I can tell. So yeah, I think we're good to go. I'm probably going to put a little load on this and let it run for a while. Just make sure everything is cool. I'm not sure what, the, what, that, os what that noise you can hear is. It's possible that the uh, oscillator frequency just runs in an audible range. Uh, I'm not sure but uh, I'm not going to worry about it. It's doing what it needs to do. So yeah, we got super lucky. Okay guys, that's going to be a wrap for the video, I think. I'm pretty happy with the results. The FANUC power supply is working. Um, it powered up. I was able to jog the servos, home the machine out. I think everything is good to go there. Uh, I checked the bus voltage. Yeah, everything's working. And uh, the small switch mode power supply that we looked at, uh, I also installed that in the tree journeyman and it seems to be working correctly. So uh, I have another board here. This is a, basically an I.O. board. They call it an auxiliary board. It's from the Dynapath uh, control and it has two of these big uh, bundled cables that come into it. One's for the outputs, one's for the inputs. and something is wrong with the board the machine basically is stuck in feed hold and when I swapped this board so I basically swapped this board from another machine that was working and the problem went away so I, I don't know how to fix this board uh, I found the IO that I think is the the culprit but uh, figuring out how to how to determine the section of the board that's bad is is uh, probably beyond my abilities. Uh, I know one side goes to an opto coupler here. I tested the opto coupler and it seems to work, uh, but then it goes into this RAM chip, and what happens inside the RAM chip is a mystery. You know that could be programmed any way they want. And then the second side of the signal goes into these these little chips here, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what they are. They seem to be they seem to be signal amplifiers. 
So like a low voltage signal comes in and a high voltage signal comes out. Um, I'm not sure how that works either. So I'm actually not sure how the I.O. works at all because it uses a matrix, a 14 by 8 matrix, to give 112 inputs using only 22 wires. But somehow it's able to it's able to read multiple inputs from the same column and row. So I'm not sure how they do that. Some way they do it with interrupts or something. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm also not sure exactly how this FANUC power supply works. This is the schematic, and I've been trying to figure it out. Um, you know, this is super simplified, of course. But you know, it rectifies the AC incoming AC three phase power here into the DC bus. And then it goes through this other rectifier here for no known reason. And then it goes into these big power uh, transistors right here. And as far as I can tell, the function of these power transistors is to reverse the DC bus. And there's no braking resistors at all. So I guess that it's a regenerative drive. And so it's dumping the current back into the grid. But I'm not sure how it accomplishes that from this circuit. Um, so if anybody knows, I would, I would love to find out more information about that. You know, I, I'm not an expert about electronics, especially at the board level. I can hack my way through it and usually make it work. If you want to learn more about board level electronics, um, check out Mr. Carlson's lab. That guy is, yeah, unbelievable. He deals a lot with uh, audio stuff, you know, amplifiers and like ham radios and stuff that I don't find particularly interesting but every once in a while he gets his hands on some industrial gear he's done several of those power supply repairs for CNC machines and you know he gets into like repairing oscilloscopes and multimeters and the guy the guy's knowledge of electronics is vastly beyond what I'll ever be you know be able to convey through YouTube so I'll put a link to his videos in this in the description box. So that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I will get back to the lathe eventually. It's just uh, my work has really picked up. So hopefully as soon as the weather turns cold, things will slow down. So thanks for watching.